friends, my name is Hamid. Today I'm working on this Sub Zero Vine Cooler. The model on this unit is 424G, and I will show you how to find the leak. There's five ways you can find the leak on the system, and I'll show you how to do that. This unit was not cooling uh, when I went to the customer house, uh, so I told the customer that um, you need to bring the unit in my place, and then I can work on it. So, in order to, to find the model number. It's right here. It's 424G-S-TH-2. Um, this unit has two separate evaporators. This is your evaporator for the top. This one is for the bottom. And in order to get to the evaporator, um, you have to take all of these bits and pieces out. You have to take all, all of these bits and pieces out. Um, in order to do that, um, the sliders are on the side. I added these tapes. Each slider goes in uh, different places. So mark down the numbers on it on both sides, top and bottom. The same thing on this side on the left and right. I mark it down and then I add a sticker on each, um, each of these sliders too. I added the screws and everything. So I made kind of similar to these uh, uh, notes I had to cut the tape in uh, small pieces and write in the notes with the marker so that's good um, the next thing I did was I took the inside panel off which is this one this is the inside I took those off from the center and then there's a piece that stays on this side and another piece on other side similar to this one you see this so there's excuse you take this panel off and then once you take that panel off it's held by one screw right here the front panel here uh, and then you can take these two screws off and then pull us out and here you can get, get to the connections um i got all of these uh, stuff here um, i will show you the cheapest way to find the leak and the expensive way and professional way to find the leak the first way you want to check your leakage uh, to use the soapy water add a little bit of uh, dishwasher soap in the water and then stir it with something and then once you get foam you can use the foam and all connections of evaporator and then you can check the leak from there but in order to check the leak um, with the soapy water you want to make sure you have to use a little bit of nitrogen uh, charge it with, with nitrogen or freon to make sure it maintain its uh, uh, pressure and then you can check that i got my drill here this plastic piece i found it from a broken uh, plastic from a washer or something i was working on it uh, i put this in the drill <clears throat> and i'm gonna stare it now here you can see i'll put this on the side right here and i'm gonna spin it So you get the soapy water uh, try your best to find the place that has more corrosion build up like this so look at the evaporator on this one with its uh, connections here the capillary tube on the heat exchanger the way it goes to the evaporator see we got lots of corrosion build up here and look at the bottom one the bottom one looks very clean uh, it's possible we may have corrosion build up here. But that's not that bad. I can see corrosion, but that's not that bad compared to the top one. So you can use um, your soap like that. Just add, you can even get a spray bottle of soap and then keep spraying it all over the places. While your fridge is running, you're going to keep eye on it and you will see bubbles. That will confirm if you have leak or not. So that's the cheapest way. It's also another easy way uh, to find a leak in your uh, fridge, in your evaporator. And you, you may want to do this 
and a lot of places you don't do it in, in that area where you find the corrosion. You may want to use the soapy, uh, this, uh, this foam or soapy water all over the evaporator until you find the leak. So you're going to do this. Uh, first, you're going to do it in a place that you suspect the leak is there. And then if you don't find the leak, it doesn't matter if you have corrosion buildup or not, you will still do it uh, in here too. You're going to use uh, soapy water, your foam, and then while the unit is running, there is a good chance you will find the leak by doing that. In the same thing, you're going to take those two screws off. Uh, this is a very good example of finding the leak. I'm not showing you on this unit. You can uh, do all of these procedures on different uh, fridges too. So you will take that side panel off and uh, use this of course you will find the leak so that that was the first way of finding the leak and here's the another way of uh, finding the leak i got the sensor a leak detect uh, detect sensor infocom uh, tech mat uh, what you're going to do is you see the way it looks you're going to turn it on press it It's gonna make this noise for a couple of seconds. It will make this noise for a couple of seconds until it cali calibrates itself. So this is calibrating itself. And once you get the uh, this uh, Infocon calibrated, let it sit for a couple of seconds, this happens. And then now what you're gonna do is you you see that little small hole in that foam in there you're gonna run this uh, through the evaporator uh, and where you suspect the leak is so you're gonna uh, run this around the evaporator and find the leak that way okay so what you can do is um, you're gonna hold your sensor and then run it uh, through So the leak is right there, right there. And with this tool, Infocon, you can find the leak uh, faster and, and easier. If you charge it with 150 PSI nitrogen, the pressure would be higher and then this can detect it faster and easier. Um, if your unit is um, empty, you cannot find the leak with this. So remember this. And here I'll also show you another example of this that how the leak works. If I blow in this little small hole, you will see the, um, the beeping noise gets faster and louder. Uh, it gets faster, it beeps faster. So I'm going to blow on it and I'll show you. See, I keep blowing on it and you can uh, feel the, you can see the beeps. With this die, what you can do is you have to, it comes in little small packages, uh, bottles like this. You're gonna open this. I have an empty one, let me see. Oh, the empty one is here already. So you're gonna hook it on this uh, coupling and then and install this on the top. And then this part goes on your access valve. Your access valve is right here. Um, you do not have this, let me disconnect this. You do not have this access valve on all fridges. It's called piercing valve but you can add one of these uh, piercing valves um, in your on the side of the compressor and then add this add this coupling 
when this little small bottle is filled uh, filled with dye what happens is um, let me open this so it stays filled like that so the dye will be right here you're gonna open this um, piercing valve if you don't have a piercing valve sometime they have a um, access valve or you can install access valve so the access valve would look uh, similar to this and it will be on the side of the compressor that you're going to install it on the low side and then this um this coupling goes straight so here this coupling goes right here like that And then after that, you can inject your um, dye by turning this, keep turning it. You're gonna inject the dye inside of the system. Once you um, inject the dye inside of the system, after that, you're gonna add a little bit of Freon the R, if it's R134A or any other kind of gas, you're gonna inject that gas on top of this and then you have to run the unit for 24 hours. Once you run the unit for 24 hours, you will come back with your glasses and your flashlight. What you can do is you're gonna wear these glasses While the unit is running, you're gonna run your flash, uh, you're gonna turn on your flashlight. See that? Um, I already added dye on this um, system and I was running this unit. So um, if you wear these uh, glasses, you can see the leakage very easily. Uh, let me see if I can uh, somehow bring this glass closer to the closer to the camera so you can see it but i'll show i don't know if you can see it on the camera or not look at the look at the leak right there you see that white spot that's where my leak is and you have to keep running this back and forth you're gonna run it on one evaporator and then run it on another evaporator going back and forth uh, you may also want to uh, take this insulation off and later on you can add another piece because you don't know if you're assuming that you found the leak and there might be another leak then you're gonna make a mistake so it's important to get rid of these insulations if you're uh, looking for exact leak and then once you find your leak, you're good to go after that. So um, I got the light here and you can see the leak right there, that white spot. But somehow I'm going to add something under this flashlight and I'll hold this uh, a glass. You see the leak right there. So the Freon and the dye leak is on top of the evaporator and even the, the thermistor wire is also, uh, fell, uh, there's a little bit of dye on the thermistor wire too, you, you can see it. So here you go, that's my leak right there. A professional uh, way of finding the leak. This is a crazy expensive um, a tool compared to all of this. Uh, this is around thousand dollar or more. What you can do is um, you will turn it on. This does exact same way of um, a calibration, similar to that one, but that one is like 300 to, 200 to 300 dollar part uh, tool. This is thousand dollar to more. Uh, I found this. Um, on a good deal for thousand dollars usually they are expensive so you're gonna turn this on 
there's a little small red ball inside and usually it goes inside you kind of have to tap on it to drop it down so that little small ball drop down you want to make sure that the, that ball is down you're gonna run this for a couple of seconds exact same thing you did with that one it's gonna calibrate itself um, and then what you can do is you got a small medium large you're gonna go on large um, leak size um, if you think you got a large leak you're gonna select large if medium you're gonna select medium if a small you're gonna um, uh, go with a small one so my leak is a small because when I was uh, checking my unit uh, it had a small leak so you're gonna you're gonna select a small on this um, H10 Pro this is called H10 Pro and I've been using this for a year now I, I'm super happy with this so what you can do is um, I always keep it charged it comes with a charger in order to find a leak you're gonna make sure your unit is running if the unit is not running you cannot find a leak with any of this with this with that with that and soapy water leak with this dye you really don't have to uh, run the unit after 24 hours once you inject the dye for 24 hours running the unit it doesn't matter if your unit is on or off it's gonna leak out and then you can find it but with these no you really have to run the unit remember that little small ball has to be there always because most of the time the ball goes back again and it stays there so you may want to flick it it falls down mm, no the ball is still there give it another flick Okay, the ball fell down. <clears throat> so it looks we also have it looks we also have a leak at the back right there because with the die and right I could not see it but this detects it so if you're running it in motion like this so I have one leak right here the another leak is in there So it looks we also have it looks we also have a leak at the back right there because with the die and right I could not see it but this detects it. So if you're running it in motion like this So I have one leak right here, the another leak is in there. Uh, you can also use a nitrogen um, to charge it uh, 150 psi and then that way uh, the Enfican and H10 Pro also the soapy water would work really good the dye you really don't have to do anything just run it for 24 hours and then turn off the unit and check for the spot the white spots with your glass and your flashlight um, so there's uh, there's another way that you can find the leakers by using your gauge and I'll show you how to do that You're gonna add your uh, you want to make sure your gauge is zero and then It's also make sure it's uh, zero and it's also closed You're gonna add your gauge right here or if you have an access valve you're gonna uh, install it into the access valve 
or if you have a piercing valve, of course it will be closed. So you're gonna open it. And when you open it, uh, let me put this right here. When you open your access valve right here, the piercing valve, um, it should read uh, on room temperature, it should read about 60 pounds, 50, 60 pounds is okay. If it's less than that, then we have leak. So I'm gonna open it and we will see. So you can open this too. And here. So it's open fully now. What's my reading? Theory. This also indicates we have leak. You have to have a lot of experience to figure it out with using the gauges in different method because uh, if you get problem with the compressor or the capillary tube or the dryer filter is plugged, uh, you will also have something similar issues. But you can only confirm this by running the unit and see how fast uh, it drops down and how, how fast by turning the unit off uh, it climbs back again if it's going faster again then it means you still got leak if after run, running the unit if it goes up back again super slow that in the case you got restriction so that was another way of checking it and let me close this and i'll show you the last trick Here talking only about the residential compressors and leakage, not commercial because I know some people would uh, write on comments about commercial stuff and uh, I'm not gonna argue with anyone because I'm working on a residential unit and it's general and all the residential fridges, wine coolers, uh, the freezers, all of them, uh, it's similar compressors not exact same compressors but the way you're working on it is kind of similar you can find the same way of leakage um, okay so the compressor that they have a relay capacitor ptc starter on the side which looks similar to these ones you can use your gauge and get the amperage reading this can also show you if there is a leakage or not so you're gonna mm, select your amperage reading and select one side of the uh, line on the compressor that goes on the compressors that they have that little small control board or they call it inverter board they have it on the side you cannot use this amperage reading method or linear compressor you cannot use this method you can only use this amperage reading method on the compressors that they have relay capacitor or ptc starter on the side it doesn't matter if it's this one or if it's another one two of them you want to make sure you you get the last um, electrical line that runs off the compressor or goes to the compressor you do not want to get this wire if it goes to the cooling fan or condenser fan motor or anything else then it's going to confuse you with the reading so always get one of your lines on the side of the compressor select your amperage reading and in general the compressors on the room temperature when you start it it should run about 1.1 to 1.9 amps if it's running um, over 2 amps there's a good chance if the unit is not working and it's running over 2 amps there's a good chance you got problem with the compressor or possibly you got restriction but if the unit is running under 1 amp that tells you that uh, you got leak in the system and I'll prove it here so here you go i selected the amperage reading here that uh, you want to use your climb meter like this and then now i'm gonna turn on the unit okay so i'm just gonna wait for the compressor to kick in it has kicked in So look at it, that also in the case we have leak. Take a look at it. Just look at it. It's supposed to run at least 1.1 amp, 1.2, 1.3, 1.5, 1.9. It's 
it's under one amp it's one under half amp so that indicates we have leak and remember when you're checking for your leakage um, do not uh, top up the unit do not use uh, nitrogen because if you're using nitrogen to check the pressure with uh, soapy water or anything else uh, that can fuses the, the compressor and everything you will not get a proper reading when I go in a customer house with leakage um, fridges this is the first thing I do I check my evaporator the frost pattern and see how much frost I got if I have a feeling that, the, that we have leak in the system then what I'm gonna do is I'll pull out the unit get to the compressor straight and then I get my amperage reading that tells me that we have leak in the system or not and then if I'm really n not sure about the unit, how, how bad the leak is or where the leak is, then I can also go with different plants by using them. Uh, and second, dye, dye is my last option because uh, I use dye on units that I want to find the exact uh, leak where exactly the leak is and then I can possibly repair it. So I'm, this is getting old for me. I'm not using that anymore. Uh, at the moment, the only way I can find leak is I, I use my clamp meter and get, uh, check my frost pattern. And this is my favorite tool right now, the Ishton Pro. I use this. If you have more experience uh, with the leakage in the system, then you may not even need to use this. You can just look at the frost pattern and see how much frost buildup is. And using gauges are also another good option. Thank you so much for watching my videos. If you guys have any questions, please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like my videos, share it with others. You can also follow me on Facebook. It's called Hamid Appliances Repair. Thank you.